scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every Purpose Vision Identity Our lives are not a mistake one of the biggest battles that I know I have fought in my life is trying to find that purpose, that vision, that passion. It's a joy to be able to come with you with a seminar called Jesus and the Blood Covenant. We don't just want to be able to share thoughts. We want to get down into the heart of the matter. And Paul said to the Thessalonians, so affectionately longing for you, we are well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. We love tying our hearts together, our faith shields together, and it is our hope that as we share Jesus in the blood covenant that we can share the Bible to our hearts and our hearts one with the other as we come to know him better. To have an opportunity to take advantage of their teaching of the blood covenant and anything else that they teach as you jump on it. I want to talk about the teaching that you get the thoroughness and the, the, the depth um, of the word um, that Pastor Bruce and Terry um, dive into is awesome and I love that because um, that's what um, you need sometimes instead of being just on the surface it means it needs to be in depth and um, having the meat of the word and I just um, I love that. Pastor Bruce is teaching because he doesn't just take it he delves into it he digs deep he researches it um, it, and it's a passion. You can tell when it's a passion um, because it just comes through uh, in the teaching and the, the facial expressions and the countenance. And I can guarantee that when I'm sitting under his teaching, I'm listening to it and I know that I am going to get something far deeper than I had anticipated in the beginning. Can you really place a value on the love of God? It's almost immeasurable. As we attempt to come to that, we take Jesus in the blood covenant and share what it means with what God paid for us and how we can apply it in our lives. Moments in time changes the courses of our life in an instant. Creation. When Eve listened to Satan in the garden and Adam agreed. The Passover lamb. Jesus Garden experience. There's a huge moment in time that people have not really zeroed in on that I've seen. And it's a time when Jesus went to the upper room and in the upper room he went to uh, the disciples and said, uh, here I am, I'm risen. And when he said that, he said, don't touch me yet. He also went to Mary out in the garden of and she turned around and tried to touch his feet and she says, don't touch me yet. But then later he went into the upper room with Thomas and he said, go ahead, touch me. What really happened right there? That moment in time is our first session and what it really means to have a blood covenant with Jesus Christ. I, I, I found myself more interested in the Old Testament since um, doing the blood covenant. Uh, it seems more interesting, and uh, I seem to be getting more out of it. I have to tell you, it changed my life. Well, like Cook said, had I known what I know now, I would live my life differently. I need to hear the word. I need to not just have it read to me. To have an opportunity to take advantage of their teaching of the Blood Covenant and anything else that they teach as you jump on it. I want to talk about the teaching that you get from Pastor Bruce and Terry. The thoroughness and the, the, the depth um, of the word um, that Pastor Bruce and Terry um, dive into is awesome and I love that. The blood covenant is, is more than a contract, more than an agreement. It's something given to us by God, by, by, by him sacrificing Yeshua, his son. The entire teaching that Bruce and Terry gave, showing that connection between the Old Covenant and the New, 
it gives me a sense of belonging, being a Messianic Jew. Binding the two together so that we are one, one in the olive tree, mm -hmm. so that we can go forward to, to spread the word, spread the gospel. To me, what can I do? Scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every Propitiation is the appeasement of wrath or atonement. Jesus took God's righteous anger in judgment that I deserve on himself. He propitiated or satisfied God's wrath a great read, a great study that deals with Jesus being our propitiation and he even says that he became the, our mercy seat. He became the seat where the blood was applied right on the ark. Our study in the blood covenant will lead you to some great propitiation. Propitiation. <laughs> propitiation. 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 Can you try that one? Try it. Propitiation. Hannah, give it a try. Propitiation. Awesome. Wow. To gain or regain favor. My debt has been paid. Say you're married and you have a fight, which would be these guys over here. <laughs> <laughs> Propitiation means to make things right with the person that you did wrong. If I have an argument with my wife, um, I have to gain, regain favor with her. The same thing with, with God. You make things right with God. I am reconciled in God through Christ. That's what it means to me. And because of that, God will show me favor. I forget. Yourself <laughs> <laughs> to me, what can I do? Scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every As we take our deep study into the scriptures, we come across some really uh, interesting Hebraic thought. Chesed, or as the Hebrews say, chesed, it's a Hebrew word that doesn't have an exact English equivalent. And so, translators have come up with some interesting words. Sometimes, in, in various translations, it's translated mercy, love, grace or graciousness, and loving kindness. All of these capture the idea of God's chesed for us. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One Hebrew word makes all the difference. It describes God's perfect faithfulness to all who are in covenant with him. It can change your life. It can change your marriage. It can change how you relate to others. Psalm 36.10 Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Psalms 42, 8 says, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer 
to the God of my life. Yourself to me, what can I do? Scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every Jesus and the Blood Covenant We have one section on holiness. You know, when we hear the word holy, we often get a picture of some religious object like a golden communion, communion cup or the Ark of the Covenant. Because of certain movies, some of us picture these objects as having magical or mystical powers. When others hear the word holy, we think of harshness. Still others may think of a boring religion. But holiness is not so mysterious. Holiness does not mean that God stands over us with a big stick, threatening us as if we do not measure up to his standards the requirement of holiness in his law as a loving provision of his blessing. For example, God provided marriage and family as a safe and loving environment for children to grow and thrive. God commanded, do not commit adultery, not because he wanted to stifle our emotions or control our sexual behavior, but to protect the precious gift of family. When a husband and wife are holy onto each other, each is setting apart the other and protecting them and protecting the family. Holy being set apart. Holiness is a way for us to look at our behavior and the choices we make. It is our love response back to God for his mercy and sacrifice for us. In Jesus and the Blood Covenant, we take the mystery out of holiness. Yourself to me, what can I do? But worship, what can I say? But holy, holy is the Lord. Scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every One of the biggest battles that I know I have fought in my life is trying to find that purpose, that vision, that passion. And Jesus in the Blood Covenant takes us into one of the, one of the thoughts about that. Is purpose the source for vision? Is vision the source for purpose? I think they all intermingle in such a wonderful way. God has a plan for our lives. He wants to give us passion. He wants to give us purpose. He wants to give us vision. And as we come to really know where the source of that is, we truly can go for the identity and the vision that God has for us. In Ephesians 1, verses 11 and 12, we come to another one of those thousand word, thousand dollar uh, theological words, only this one's in English, called predestination. I like to call that a predetermined outcome. A journey that we're taking and God has a plan for where we should arrive. And in verses 11 and 12 from Ephesians, it says that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. There's a purpose. There's a vision. There's an identity. Let's run with it and let's go for the praise of his glory. Yourself to me. What can I do? But worship. What can I say?
scratching the surface of your love for me Plunging your depths could take eternity oh, but every Be valiant. This is a study in masculinity and for the man of God. We're called to be knights, in my opinion. And Be Valiant takes an opportunity to really discuss chivalry, really discuss the concept of masculinity, to really discuss what machoism is. Be Valiant, that was a uh, phenomenal uh, men's retreat. Um, it was, uh, it just spoke uh, volumes. I mean, it, it was amazing. Um, that was, uh, the first men's retreat we had for Hope Oak Community Church and uh, Pastor Bruce Mulberry spoke at it. Chivalry. Ken Helm, Henry Digby, wrote a book and he defined chivalry this way. That state of mind which disposes men to heroic actions and keeps them conversant with all that is beautiful and sublime in the intellectual and moral world a state of mind that puts us into being disposed to nobleness. Page 12 of the Broadstone is another quote. The fear of God, says Bushing, and love were the main pillars of a noble chivalry. In our culture today and across America, abuse is too rampant. In our homes, parents abusing their children, husbands abusing their wives, wives abusing their husbands, and there is zero tolerance for abuse of any kind. When we really have the fear of God and of love in our hearts, and they are the main pillars of our life, we can learn to be noble. It is not sufficient simply to repeat the credo as a parrot, but we must meditate on it, attentively on each of the mysteries contained in it. The credo that he's referring to is this. And men, to come into true knighthood, I believe this paragraph carries tremendous weight. Be grounded in true faith, steadfast in the faith, firm in hope, firm in the love of God, perfect in the fear of God. He ought to be fervent in prayer. For the love of Jesus Christ now there's a list that if we could walk in that, men, we would truly release women into who they're called to be. Part of being valiant is really understanding authority. In Exodus 14.31, it says, Thus Israel saw great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. God gave Moses some tremendous authority. But not only did the children of Israel understand that authority, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 says, And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. When we come into our authority and operate in it in a proper way, we really reveal the authority delegated by God, and God is the true authority. That's why God has given that to us dads, moms. When we, in our masculine image of God, can really understand that we're not given authority so that we can make people do what we want them to do for our pleasure, but rather for the glory of God and let them grow into that glory, we have truly given the revelation of God. There's three other reasons for authority, protection, direction, and correction. If we do not learn that we must protect with our authority first, not very many people are going to come in under our authority because they're not protected. If they're not protected, we will not be able to give them direction. If we can't give them direction, we will never be able to correct them. For many of us men, we come into the correction mode as our children start to grow and we use force and uh, really push our children in a way that it's power instead of authority. Be Valiant studies the difference between having power to make people do things and having authority that leads people to do things. 
That's why when we're giving true protection, we could become the prophet of God because we speak God's word. We speak forth truth. When we're protecting our children's hearts and our wives' hearts, we can begin to give direction because we're speaking God and we become the priest of the home. Then and only then can we become the king with our queen and releasing all in the right authority as we train up our children in the way they should go. If we're using power, truly when our children leave at 18, we no longer have any way to influence our children. But when we raise our children up in proper authority, we never lose that authority. My father still has authority in my life because he has trained and talked and used his authority in the proper way. And when he speaks, I listen. I pray that I have that with my children who are now husbands or wives of, uh, in a family with children. And they are set up in their own authority, but my authority as dad still rides in their life because there's relationship. Because I pray that I can come across as a true prophet of God, a true priest of God, and then I can be a king for God, really a knight, setting boundaries, protection, and giving proper life into our children. It was, a, uh, it was a, an unbelievable experience for me. For me, that uh, it really showed me to open my eyes to uh, what it really truly meant to be a, a man of God and, and what my responsibilities are as a, uh, as a, a prophet, priest, and king of my, uh, of my household. Yourself to me, what can I do?